Good evening, my name is Robert Holman. This is my submission for the Alpha Chi Original Poetry Contest. I'll be presenting poetry in spoken word, traditional form, and prose poetry. Hope you enjoy. A Dream About D'Angelo. I remember trips to Chicago on weekends when I didn't have work. Sometimes I did have work and I left to see you anyway. Bringing my homework with me to do in the hotel, in between your naps. I remember changing your diaper and making your bottles. I, I wasn't around as much, so people didn't think that I knew how you liked it. But I was your dad. We had that kind of connection. I remember not being able to afford a receiving blanket until I'd use one of my undershirts. And when I came back to Missouri, I would wrap it around my head and pull it over my nose because I missed the way you smelled. And I'd wake up. And it would be me and you and your sister and we had our own house and you were four. And you had glasses and shorts that looked too short because you had long legs like your other side of the family. I remember telling you that yesterday you were just a baby and that I was a senior in college. And you looked at me and laughed and said, Dad, you're silly. I'm 28. But yesterday you were just a baby. And you realized that yesterday you were a baby. And then you got mad because you couldn't remember what you had for breakfast. You began to shrink. Your hair got shorter. Your face got rounder before your neck and your wrists got doughy. I didn't try to stop it. I wanted four years back of what I lost with you. And we were happy once I held you and rocked you and made your bottles just how you like and rubbed A&D ointment on your rations. This time, I want you to know that I love you. Dented cans. In Bowling Green, you drank your first stag wind temperature. Its froth won't dissolve in your mouth. It's an inglorious measure that makes men and reminds men the color of apple juice, dark, sour, sultry, and slow. When you get to the bottom, swirl the residue from the unwashed mug. Can't wash it. Loses flavor. And gulp it down. Then crush the can. I know it feels like wet sand and tastes like mustache hair. When the leftover grain settles in your gums, run your tongue along your cheek, and peer through the bottom of the mug and look for the room full of older men who brought Vietnamese wives back with them. And how they peek around the corner before passing by the doorway, entering the room, and leaving the room. Very carefully. Then slam the handle glass down and belch hard enough that you think you might vomit. But don't vomit. Can't vomit. Pure man now. Hands missing with fingers clasped to the boatman's bureau and harvest and walker hats. Tip forward, off beat. If you're really a man's man, You'll head down the highway and turn on County Road A-107 and challenge Cotton for some of this moonshine. It doesn't matter if you win. No one wins. But when you come back blind, if you're a man's man, if you're really a man's man, you'll get a job at the brick plant like my grandpa and work there for 47 years. And then in your retirement, work for Margaret Jordan and come home smelling like clay and brimstone and soot. Or you join the military and never come home. Theme 14. An old white man named Cotton made us drink moonshine so that we could date his granddaughter. I ended up in the hospital. Chevy S10. He looks like my grandpa. Maybe he's someone's grandpa. I should stop staring and take my face off the window of his truck. Perhaps he's a fireman. Or his son's a fireman. And his grandson went to the A&P with him and wants to be a fireman too. That would explain why there's a plastic hard hat and a toy Dalmatian in the truck cab. Or maybe his son died in a fire saving a woman whose house was burning because of grease and her husband died and he always put out the fires before they got too big when she started to cook. Now look, Yvonne, 
flower puts out the fire, not water. I'm not always going to be around, Yvonne. But she forgot this time. She'd been forgetting a lot of things lately for a while. The firefighter died saving her. But she's still in a taste of care. And this old man that looks like my grandpa still goes to visit her. Maybe he's a hunter and lives alone on the edge of town on a hill in a cabin. Because the tall Christmas plaid thermos full of black coffee. My grandpa liked black coffee. Maybe he's a Vietnam vet and he's shell-shocked and he tore apart his family because he thought therapy was for sissies. Or maybe this hat belongs to his younger brother who always wanted to impress him. So he enlisted into the army and was blown to smithereens days before his damp, crumpled letter made it home. Hey, y'all. Doing okay. Lots of trees here. We'll be back soon. Or maybe he left his keys in the ignition so he won't get into a long, drawn-out conversation and he needs a good excuse to avoid him. Maybe he doesn't like to talk about how it used to be and should stop staring and take my face off of his truck window. August 8, 1998. He only comes out to sit in the heat of the day and when the mosquitoes start coming. Naps are irrelevant, but they're spent reliving World War II and Ticonderoga plays in the background and then Walker, Texas Ranger, the sky has painted itself a peculiar iridescent blue. The kind white curtains get when clouds crowd around the sun to hear a bedtime story. Sunset. What you know, good John Doe? Tell me, good kid. I know I left Texas running. Ha <laughs> ha! Me too, right behind you. His favorite part was watching the grandkids catch fireflies and let them go. Gotta let them go. Don't go no further now, you hear? Okay, Papa. Your boy look just like you, man. He called me over and put his arm next to mine. Ask him, John Doe. Is he pure? He's getting black. Still ain't as black as you. Took you a while to get that black, homie. You catch it up quick, though. That was their joke. Is he pure? They laughed and I giggled and ran off. I stood under the trees to buzz like the locusts until my lips were numb. Well, let me get on out of here. I can't see for driving. What'd you say tomorrow? Whiskey? Don't hurt me now. I got the family reunion tomorrow. We'll, we'll be back by this time, John Doe. Papa waited and waited and walked inside and took his shirt off. We were on our way out of the door. Just finished kisses and hugs and see you tomorrow. John Doe pulled up and heard the wheezing and hacking all the way outside, that rocking back and forth. He knew that ripping phlegm and what it felt like to have soot in the bottom of your lungs and, and cough up a blood clot. August 9th, 1998. Learned how to ride my bike that day. I'm flying, I'm flying. You would be too. Felt the table scoot across the linoleum. It was a deeper sound than, than, than a chair. Something I could feel in my little legs. I, my, my eight-year-old legs. The only time we moved the table was when Granny was going to mop. So I went to the laundry room to get the pine saw. And I saw a bed with wheels. I don't know where my Granny was. The people in the kitchen had on our blue army pants. I looked down the hallway and see the churchman standing in Papa's doorway. I, I, I don't want to go down there. I, maybe it's the expression on their face. They're having trouble getting the bed down, the rattling of the wheels and the snapping of the rails, jamming down the hallway, scraping the paint off. It, it took strength for them to lift him up and hoist him onto the gurney. He smelled like zest and muscle rub, still warm, shirtless. They knocked his placard over. 47 years of service, Harbison Walker, Brickley. Robert Lee Holman. 
There's a chatter outside, mostly prayer. The door slams, echoing from the mouth of the driveway he just paved. It still smells like asphalt. I hear the rattle of the wheels and the snapping in the place. They rolled him out. I know it was him. I know how he looks when he's sleeping, but I still ask my mom. Is that Papa? Going, leaving. July 7th, 1998. Call Barbara for her birthday. Convince her to move back to Vandalia. That 30 miles is a dangerous drive. The morning didn't smell so sweet. Almost out of strawberry jelly. I like it. Burns on my toast. July 29th, 1998. Make Donna breakfast, wash her car for her birthday, save my appetite for Golden Corral. August 7th, 1998. 2 p.m. Having trouble making it up the two steps in the house with the groceries. All I can hear is blood in my ears. I had to stop. Eunice and Donna are worried. Daddy, why don't you just go to the doctor? I ain't letting them cut me up. August 8th, 1998. 11 a.m. The truck started to find, went to the brick plant to see old friends of my grandson. Need to get our hair cut. Leaving at noon tomorrow. Tachometer is on zero. August 9th, 1998, 6 p.m. I made it back from the home in McPike Reunion. The fever ain't gone down. 8.30, Joyce and the grandkids are on their way home. I feel the sand at the bottom of my lungs and taste gravel when I cough. My neck is tight. Donna is screaming. Find the handkerchief. The coughs are too loud. The breathing compressions stop. 